The Mage class is with no doubt one of the most popular and sought after playstyles in Hypixel Skyblock, as not only is one of the strongest weapons in the entire game built for the Mage class, but it's also really easy to learn and cheap to get started with. However, in order to play Mage well, you're going to need a lot of mana to cast abilities with, and if you don't know how to scale and manage your mana properly, you're not really going to get very far at all. Now while increasing your mana is literally the most important piece of knowledge required to play Mage effectively, it's also not the only important piece of information which makes Mage surprisingly complicated, that it just ends up becoming overwhelming very quickly. This is why I've taken the task to break down every important detail about scaling and managing your mana to hopefully make it a much easier concept to understand. However, there is still a lot of content to cover in today's video though, so sit back, relax, and enjoy this deep dive into scaling your mana in Hypixel Skyblock. So what is mana? Why is it so complicated? And what are the fundamental ideas that you need to know in order to scale your mana in this game? To fully understand the contents of today's video, let's start with the first question. What is mana? Mana by itself is a very simple concept. Think of it as a fuel that's required to use specific abilities, and once you run out of that fuel, you can no longer cast any abilities that use mana until it's regenerated again. Now this isn't exactly the problem with mana's complexity, it's more the general term for mana, intelligence. Now while most people think that mana and intelligence are the same thing, they actually have some pretty big differences. Mana is purely the fuel that's used to cast all the fancy mage abilities, while intelligence is what increases your overall mana yield. Scaling your intelligence will result in you having more mana readily available for use, but it also results in your magic weapons dealing significantly more damage the higher your intelligence is. This means that as a mage, you don't want to only scale your mana to use your abilities, you want to scale your intelligence as it includes both more mana and more ability damage. So now that we understand what mana actually is, I'm going to focus on scaling intelligence, or for short, intel, for the rest of this video. Which brings us to the second question, why is it so complicated? Now while scaling intelligence is the most important aspect of playing as a mage, some abilities in this game have absurdly high base mana costs that even with really high intelligence numbers will still drain your mana extremely fast. This means that mana regeneration and mana cost reduction are other very important metrics that need to be explored, and on top of this, being able to actually scale your ability damage is also very important. Now there are many ways that you can increase intel, ability damage, or reduce your mana costs, but I'm only going to be focusing on the most significant ones in today's video, being weapons, armor, enchants, accessories, skills, and pets. I could continue this voiceover explanation as to how all of these factors contribute to intelligence, but I figured it would be easier if I hop into the game right now and actually show you guys exactly how scaling your intelligence works. So in order to show how intelligence scaling works in practice, I figured the easiest way to do this would be to start on a fresh, brand new profile with no stat boosts at all, and then slowly but surely add in more and more different stat boosts to show you guys exactly how the mana scales accordingly. So to start things off on a brand new profile, you can see that I have zero intelligence on a fresh skyblock profile. If I click on the profile overview and then look at the stats here, it says that I have no intelligence, but my mana pool is set to 100. This is because of what I explained in the introduction earlier as to how mana is like the fuel for abilities whilst intelligence is both the fuel for abilities and the damage for them. And I can demonstrate that I still have mana without having any intelligence by using something like the Rogue Sword, right clicking it once for the ability, and you can see down in the bottom right corner that my mana did get used there and I do have an ability active right now. But if I switch off of that brand new Skyblock profile and go to one that has a couple of more stats on it, you can already tell that my mana has gone from 100 all the way to 338, even though I have no armor and I've got nothing on me. Now take a look at my skyblock overview here, you can see that I now have 238 intelligence, which brings me up to a mana pool of 338. And this is due to a couple of base profile upgrades here, but the ones that I'll be focusing in this video are going to be the enchanting skill and the alchemy skill. So as you can see here, the enchanting skill provides a base 106 intelligence, whilst the alchemy skill provides a base 86 intelligence, and this is with both of these skills being max level. If you add both of their intel boosts together, this is a total intelligence boost of 190. So if I ignore all of the other stats on my profile here, it would bring my total intelligence value from 0 all the way to 192, which would bring the mana pool up to 292 since you start with 100 base mana. On top of this base intel boost provided by these skills though, if I go ahead and throw on a basic set of wise dragon armor, you can see that my mana almost doubles just from putting on this armor set. 
Coming back to the stats breakdown once again, you can see that my intelligence has now increased up to 588, which is a pretty drastic jump from the 300 or so that I had before. And if I take a look at what is causing this, it tells you that my Wise Dragon helmet is giving me 125 base intelligence. The boots, leggings, and the chest plate are also providing 75 base intel. However, armor can also boost your intel in a slightly different manner. If I equip the second set of wise armor on instead, you can see that I go from 688 mana all the way to 1188. And this armor here is completely clean with no enchants on it, but it has some specific reforges which give it all that intelligence. So taking a look at this helmet here for an example, this basic wise dragon helmet provides 125 intelligence just as a normal stat. But this very wise dragon helmet provides 250 intelligence, which is literally double that of the normal wise dragon helmet. Now this is because I've reforged the wise helmet to wise, and because the wise helmet has the word wise in the name, the reforge will change the name to a very wise dragon helmet. But the special thing about the Wise Reforge is that not only does it give you an extra 15 health and 2 speed, but it also provides you with that beautiful 125 intelligence boost. Now I've applied that Wise Reforge to my shoes as well, but my leggings have what's called the Necrotic Reforge, and if you take a look at the blue numbers here, the Necrotic Reforge gives you plus 150 intel instead of plus 125. The chest plate also has the Loving Reforge on it instead of the Wise or the Necrotic Reforges, and the Loving Reforge by default will also provide an extra 100 base intel on top of the base intel that the piece already comes with. So overall, even though this armor set has no enchants or really any upgrades to it, these very simple reforges end up adding a ton of extra intel on top of the base intel the armor provides. And this is exactly why wearing this armor set is increasing my intelligence and my mana by a pretty substantial amount. But on top of wearing this wise dragon armor set, I can also increase my mana with my accessories. And the way by doing that is by selecting a very specific power stone if I come over to Maxwell and talk to him. So by default, on a fresh profile, you'll only have the base power stones unlocked. I'll highlight them in the edit so you can see exactly which ones these are. If you haven't bought any power stones or you aren't able to afford any at the time being, the best one to go for for intelligence is the Inspired Power, because this one will provide the most intelligence out of any of the other options here. Now if I go ahead and click on the Inspired Power to show what it does, you can see that my mana has once again jumped up from about 1100 all the way to 1400, and on top of wearing this armor set, Having those skills from earlier and just the base mana that a profile comes with, we are now sitting at a whopping 1.4 thousand mana and I haven't even shown all of the methods to keep increasing this. Now on top of selecting a power stone, you can also do what's called stats tuning and currently my stats are tuned to give me bonus attack speed, but if I really wanted to, I can clear those points, select intelligence instead, assign all of my points into intelligence, and now this is giving me an extra plus 74 intelligence, so when I exit this menu, I now have 1492 mana, putting me even closer to 1500. Now this inspired power will only give you a certain amount of intelligence based on how much magical power you have at the time, and I will get into how to obtain magical power later on in the video, but I just want to show how it all works before I go into detail on how to do that. To throw up a quick side by side though, if I hop over to my main profile and show you how much the inspired power actually gives me on my main, you can very clearly see a massive difference in intelligence from having 375 magical power and over 1000, so going for as much magical power as possible is also going to increase your intelligence by a drastic amount. But having the correct power selected isn't even the only way that you can keep on doing this. You can also have specific weapons that boost your intelligence, and also have specific reforges for those weapons that also boost your intelligence. To provide a basic example, I have a clean bonzo stuff right here in my inventory, and if we read the numbers, it gives me plus 250 intelligence if I hold the item. If you take a look at my mana count without holding the Bonzo Staff, I start with 1,492, but the moment I switch to the weapon, it goes all the way up to 1,742. Now this is just a clean, simple Bonzo Staff with nothing added onto it. If I decide to reforge the Bonzo Staff to the Heroic Reforge instead, instead of it giving me 250 intelligence, it provides 315 thanks to that plus 65 that the Heroic Reforge is actually giving. So if I hold the Heroic Bonzo Staff instead of the regular one, I go from 1,742 intel all the way up to 1,807, which once again is further boosting my mana on top of all the other things I've already done. And then last but not least, we also have pets. Now on this account, I have two sheep pets that I want to showcase in today's video, with one minor discrepancy to showcase the difference between the two. 
So if we take a look at the base stats of this level 100 sheep pet, it provides plus 100 intelligence and also plus 20% ability damage. But if I take a look at this sheep pet instead, this one provides me with plus 200 intelligence, but the same plus 20% ability damage. Now, if I go ahead and equip this sheep pet, my intel goes from 1,400 to 1,500. And if I do the same thing by holding out that bonzo stuff from earlier, I go all the way up to 1,900 intelligence. However, equipping this second sheep pet that somehow gives me an extra 100 intelligence will push me all the way up to 2,000 intel. And the way that it does this is because of the pet item that it's holding. So the original sheep pet here is holding a dwarf turtle shellmet, and if we read the stats of that, it just says that it makes the pet's owner immune to knockback, with the pet owner being me in this case. Now, obviously, knockback immunity is really useful, but it's not going to boost our intelligence in any way. However, the second sheep pet here has an item called the textbook, which increases the pet's intelligence by 100%. This means that the textbook effectively doubles the base intelligence of a pet. So if you don't have any base intelligence at all in a pet and you apply the textbook, I'm pretty sure it does absolutely nothing. But because the sheep pet has a 100 base intel at max level, we are able to double that with the textbook and make the pet provide 200 intelligence instead. And so now that we're clear on how we can boost our intelligence with a lot of different profile upgrades, now comes the part of the video where I tell you what items you should buy depending on what stage of the game you're at, and go into more detail as to how all of these things actually work, rather than just showing you how the intelligence increases. So to get things started with what gear upgrades you should go for to help increase your intelligence, I'm going to first talk about the armor sets you should go for because it's arguably one of the easiest things to do. Now you've already seen it in the showcase, but the full Wise Dragon set is one that I highly recommend getting your hands on. Not only is it really cheap and making it super accessible for early game players, but you can further dungeonize it, 5 star it, and buff it up to be even stronger than the base set, which will carry on all the way up until floor 7 dungeons, and overall just provides an insane amount of intelligence for what it is. Not to mention, the full set bonus of the full Wise Dragon set is also really good. It helps conserve your mana a lot more, so if you struggle with actually spamming abilities, having the full set bonus can be really useful. Aside from the Wise Dragon set, there's not really much else. You can go for the Storm armor set after you get a Floor 7 completion, and then go for the Aurora armor set once you really start getting into some Kudra gameplay. But both of these sets are a lot more late game, and they're not really something you can get your hands on early on, so the Wise Dragon set is probably your best bet. Now there are a couple of exceptions to what armor you should be using because like I mentioned in the video, the reforges really do carry how much intelligence you actually get. So technically, you can use any armor set you like, whether it gives you lots of health, it gives you lots of speed, maybe it even gives you lots of left click damage, but as long as you reforge it to wise, necrotic, or loving, you should be fine with the amount of intelligence it provides. The necrotic reforge is one that you should be using if you do have the money to afford it because it's a lot better than wise and it provides more intelligence. And then the Loving Reforge should almost always go on every chest plate you use for mage damage, because Loving does give a little bit of intelligence, but the main thing about it is the 5% ability damage perk, which really helps to amplify your damage. Either way, armor is really important, but your talismans are arguably even more important than that. And like I showcased earlier on, just selecting a simple power stone like the Inspired Power is going to boost your intelligence by a pretty significant amount. Now, if you are new to the game, you might be wondering, how do you get more magical power to then increase the inspired ability? Well, for starters, you are going to need an accessory bag, and in order to unlock one, you need to actually get it through the redstone collection. I suggest to level your redstone collection by putting down redstone minions on your island and just collecting them over a couple of days, and then eventually, you will level up your redstone collection really easily, and thus, you will get your accessory bag along with it. Now, assuming you already have an accessory bag and you figured out how to do that, the next step is actually filling your accessory bag with as many talismans as you can get. Now, the talismans you choose to fill your bag do not matter whatsoever, so the easiest way to get the cheapest talismans for the most magical power possible is by joining any major Skyblock Discord server such as Skyblock Simplified or Skyblock Z. Both of these discords that I just mentioned have a couple of bots that will help you find the best missing talismans for the most magical power, and the way that you do this is by going to any of the bot commands, doing the slash missing command, and it will literally just give you a list of the cheapest talismans you can buy that will also provide you the most magical power. Now, I would like to preface this because I see this a lot in my own Discord server, but while I do own a Discord server and I make Skyblock videos, I actually do not have any of these Skyblock bots in my own server. So if you join my server and think you can get any of this functionality there, you would be mistaken because I don't actually have those bots in my server. 
Nonetheless, once you have a bit of magical power under your tool belt and a pretty decently sized accessory bag, the two power stones you want to go for are either Inspired or Sighted. Sighted, I would highly recommend. It's really cheap to buy off the bazaar, and all you have to do is give Maxwell nine Ender Monocles, and then once you do that, you learn the Sighted Power Stone, and you can equip that instead of Inspired. I'll throw up a quick side-by-side -side of what Inspired and Sighted looks like on the profile that I was showing earlier, but you can very clearly see here that Sighted is much more mage-oriented and will provide you with a lot of intelligence if you choose that one instead. Now alongside Sighted, there is the Bazaar Power Stone as well, but Bazaar is really expensive and more of an endgame option, so I don't really expect any of you guys to actually go for it. Now next up on this list is going to be enchantments. Now I didn't cover enchantments in the showcase of this video because enchantments don't actually buff your intelligence, or at least not to my knowledge. However, if we take a look at the ultimate wise or the mana steel enchant, both of these are really good for mana conservation and will help you spend your abilities a lot more. Ultimate wise comes in five different levels, ultimate wise one, two, three, four, and five, with five obviously being the best. And when it comes to applying this ultimate enchant onto any mage weapon, I absolutely recommend you do, because if you are going to main any weapon, whether it's a Bonzo Staff, an AOTD, a Frozen Scythe, or even a Spirit Scepter, having Altwise 5 is pretty much a must, because it literally halves the mana cost of all of those abilities. I'll throw up a quick side-by-side -side of the Bonzo Staff that I showed earlier on in the video. The Bonzo Staff with no Ultimate Wise 5 enchant had a mana cost of 100, whilst the Bonzo Staff that did have Ultimate Wise 5 had a mana cost of 50, meaning that you can effectively spam that ability twice as much because it doesn't use anywhere near as much mana. Now, Mana Steel isn't as good as Ultimate Wise 5. I really wouldn't recommend always throwing it on every single magic weapon you use, but if you find yourself needing to get that extra bit of Mana Steel, and you don't really need the healing that Siphon or Life Steel provides, then you can swap it out for either of those two enchants, because using your left-click ability with Mana Steel will help replenish your mana a lot easier. Now, there are two more ultimate enchants being Wisdom and Legion, which also technically boost your intelligence in some way. However, I wouldn't recommend using either of these two because they're more of like a small quality of life improvement, and for the price you pay, it's not really that valuable. Now, aside from enchantments, another really good way that you could boost your intelligence is by leveling your alchemy or your enchanting skill. Now, the reason I bring this up is because not only can you get an easy base 192 extra intelligence, but that extra 192 intelligence pretty much applies to your account just as a flat bonus. Having flat stat boosts like this can be really useful if you have any multiplicative or additive stat boosters, because they will take into account all of your base profile stats before they apply the said additive or multiplicative feature. On top of this, Alchemy 50 can actually be a free skill if you level it correctly, and you can end up profiting from it pretty easily if you do all of the steps correctly. Now, I've already posted a video on how you can get Alchemy 50 and profit a pretty substantial amount, so if you'd like some more details on how to do that, I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. As for Enchanting 60 though, it's not technically free, although you can profit from it if you have a bit of RNG on your side, as all it requires from you is to do your daily experiments pretty much every single day for about a month or so before you reach max level. Now I won't go into detail on how to do that in today's video, so you're gonna have to check out somebody else's guide on leveling Enchanting to figure out how to do your experiments. Now the other form of boosting your intel that I talked about in today's video was pets, and I only showed the sheep pet in today's video because realistically, it's the only one that you should really be going for. There are some other pets in this game, like the Parrot Pet, which have a base intel stat on them, but the perks of the Parrot Pet don't really affect mages in any way at all, whilst the Sheep Pet has two really powerful mage perks, which help you conserve mana just overall and boost your mana inside of dungeons. So I highly recommend getting your hands on a high level Sheep Pet if you choose to take the mage class seriously. That being said, technically any upgrades to the Sheep Pet would be either the Ender Dragon or the Golden Dragon, but both of these are ridiculous expensive, and realistically, the Sheep Pet is the only true proper mage pet. And now that I've covered all of the different upgrades that you should probably buy on your profile to increase your intelligence, there is one more important thing that I'd like to cover before I end this video to make sure you're fully aware of everything you should need to know. Naturally, with how Skyblock works and how the updates roll out, this video is bound to become outdated at some point, and depending on when you choose to watch this video will depend on whether the information is accurate or not and relevant to the current gameplay. In order to combat this, what I encourage you to do is, depending on when you're watching once again, apply all the fundamental skills that I've taught you in this video, such as how the armor actually impacts your intelligence, how your reforges impact your intelligence, or how your accessories impact your intelligence. 
And then with this said information, do a little bit of research, go around asking people in public lobbies, maybe ask people in specific Discord servers, and try to figure out which reforges are currently meta, which power stone is currently meta, or which armor sets are currently meta. But either way, now that I've covered all of that as well, that's everything I did have for today's video. Hopefully you guys found it useful, enjoyable, or informative in some way, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.